So, I've seen this theory floating around everywhere in the Deltarune fandom. And I mean everywhere. Sometimes stated as outright fact, and I have a lot of beef with that. This theory is pretty unfounded, and the whole fandom treating it as gospel really downplays both Azrael and Rossi's significances in their respective games. And I'd like to go on possibly several tangents about this topic and hopefully bury it dead. And, as expected, warning that this is a long-ass rant and it'll delve into logic study and mistakes in critical thinking. If that sounds boring, I'll put a TLDR at the bottom for everyone who doesn't feel like setting through an insane man's lecture about fictional goat boys in varying states of distress. Insert read more here. Now, to begin, what does this theory boil down to? Well, in the simplest terms, the names Azrael and Ralsean are anagrams of each other, and the characters are the same species, as well as both being generally nice to other people, and we've never seen them in the same room together. That's about it. It ignores Ralse and Azrael's differences, their roles to the story and to the other characters, and entirely undermines the revelation of their true identities in both games. But I'll get to that. For now, let's tackle the main quote-unquote arguments, uh, which means just looking at the characters side by side. Azrael is a boss monster. This is short of outright stated verbatim in Undertale more than once, as he's Toriel and Asgore's son, and his death is the reason they have an Asian who knows how long. Not only that, but he's also pacifist, as I've heard people call him, which isn't actually true, but sure, let's run with it for now. Ralsei is also seemingly a boss monster, what with the white fur, horns, and boss monster head shape, and he's also the kindest and most forgiving of the three members of the shit squad. But all of these are completely surface level observations. Let me put it this way. In Deltarune, which is a separate canon from Undertale, Toriel has a bit of hair on the top of her head sticking up. Meanwhile, Asgore in Deltarune has a smaller beard, aka less hair. They both avoid or outright ignore their problems and keep up a cheery facade in the face of actual problems happening in hopes that things will just turn out okay in the end. We've also never seen them in the same room with one another. Lo and behold, Asgore and Toriel are the same person in Deltarune because it's an AU to Undertale, it's just a swap of wig and yada yada yada, you see where I'm going with this. The comparison I just made falls flat because the two characters are distinctly different in key ways, and also they had a child together, but I chose not to showcase that in order to quote unquote prove a faulty theory. Toriel and Asgore are distinct because Asgore is deeply in depth. In depth? In depth! <sighs> Asgore and Toriel are distinct because Asgore is deeply in debt, can't run his business well, still wants to be with Toriel after everything that happened, and seems to make a habit of visiting everyone around town to give them flowers and whenever he can. Toriel, on the other hand, has a stable job at the school, makes her own food for her and Chris, seems less interested in the shenanigans in town as of late, and literally throws all of Asgore's advances in the trash where they belong. Now, let's carry this attitude over to Azrael and Ralse. Azrael is repeatedly described as a crybaby, and it's shown that even in his soulless form, he cries when he's shown kindness in a neutral run. He's dependent on others to the point where he's willing to let the whole world crumble for a chance to spend time with someone who looks like his childhood best friend. He also pulls from his father's side, and eventually allows himself to fall into violent outbursts when soulless, even though when he was alive, his pacifism was what got him killed. His entire character arc centers on the fact that he needs to relearn his compassion for other people and realize that the world is not kill or be killed. Ralsei, on the other hand, is not only unshaken when the king flat out tells him and his friends to die, he talks back, almost sassy, and his resolve becomes stronger. He's not emotional, and at the end of chapter 1, he learns that the world is more cruel than he first thought, that being kind isn't always the right option, but it's still an important option. Ralsei cares for his friends, yes, but he willingly lets them leave the dark world, with no promise that they'll come back even after the darkness have been abandoned previously. He doesn't beg them to stay or coerce them or threaten them or lash out in any way, he simply offers them cakes if they come back. He's a caring friend, more than Asriel was to Frisk at the very least. But wait, I hear you say, all that killing stuff was Kira's fault, and Rossi never met Kira. Maybe they just had different experiences but are the same person. And I'm glad you allowed me to segue into my next point, which is Asriel is in college during Deltarune. Azrael and Undertale and Deltarune are the same person with different experiences, but fine, let's play along, let's arbitrarily insert an unrelated character into that dichotomy, namely Ralse. Ralse is not only shorter than both Susie and Noelle, it's hard to discern with Chris whether Ralse is tall or not, but they were almost the same height either way, making it unlikely that he's the oldest out of all of them. But he's also the prince of the Dark World. We know he is, not only because he tells us, but because he knows the legend of the Deltarune, something Chris and Susie have never heard of before, so he must have grown up listening to the stories of the Dark. But wait, that's not all. Azrael is popular, popular in hometown. Everyone knows him and everyone loves him. He's had a first kiss, gone to church for it, seen his parents get divorced, possibly even been there when Gerson died. Azrael has a life in hometown, but he chose to leave it to pursue greener pastures. 
Rossi, though? He's a lonely prince. He's had no friends until Chris and Susie came along. He knows of Lancer, but doesn't know anything about the rest of the kingdoms. He's been waiting patiently for the arrival of the Heroes of Light because he believes that's his only purpose in life, to serve Lightners. Now, I do not have time to dissect the moral implications of that, but I will merely use this as a point to say that when has Azriel felt like he had to serve others, especially his peers? Moreover, why would he ever come to that conclusion himself when everything in life has been handed to him on a silver platter with a cherry on top? Why would he abandon it all just to fulfill some prophecy he's probably never even heard of? Speaking of the prophecy, Azrael being the prince of the dark in it makes absolutely zero sense. In this world, not only is he a normal townsperson who just left town for college, he's also, you know, a lightener. In Deltarune, Toriel's talk spread is completely black and white, where in Undertale she had a bit of red in her eyes. This means that there is no way in absolute hell that Azrael is even a little bit darker in Deltarune. When in Undertale, it could be a fun theory to try to craft around Toriel specifically. In my personal opinion, and this is just me, that's, there's no confirmation or hint of this in the game, but if Azrael is to appear as anything in Deltarune, it would be the Angel's Heaven that they need to seal. I have reason to believe this, but to sum it up simply, Chris facing their brother at the end of the adventure would be a much more impactful climax than a typical kill god plot of most RPGs. Side note, I've seen people say that Lancer is the Prince of the Dark in the Deltarune Prophecy. However, the problem with that is that Lancer is never referred to as a prince. He's referred to as the Jack of Spades, not the Prince of Spades. Yes, he's the king's son, but that title doesn't seem to mean much. He's crowned king, he's not upgraded from prince to king, you know? People have stated that Rossi being a prince would make him the king's son, but that is entirely untrue. Not only do we have Clover, the daughter of an imprisoned king, but we also have Rossi living in his own castle, housing the real Dark Fountain, the one that isn't sealed at the end of chapter 1. The Dark Fountain in Card Castle is specifically disrupting the order of things, while the Dark Fountain in Castle Town has been there for seemingly forever, making it a simple speculative jump to assume that Rossi's title of Prince of the Dark is a reference not only to his species, but to his bloodline's role in maintaining the true Dark Fountain. But that's a whole different theory. But, but, I hear the straw man pipe up again. What about Susie's reaction to Rossi taking off his hat in chapter 1? Doesn't that mean anything? And yes, it does. It means she wasn't expecting Rossi to look like that. Neither did I. That was my exact reaction as well, and never once did I think that Rossi is Azrael in my first playthrough. Uh, not to mention, out of all of the citizens of hometown, Susie is the only one to never mention Azrael, which is why I think her and Chris got along so well. Because she wasn't looking at them as Azrael's shadow, she was looking at them as the dumbass at the back of the class. But again, details, details. There's another key component in this that people love to ignore, and that's Flowey. Boy, how do the people love to never acknowledge that Azrael and Flowey are the same person and often treat them as entirely separate entities. Hmm, I wonder if it has anything to do with them not having an immediate physical resemblance like Azrael and Ralsei do. Hmm. Anyway, enough shade, let's get to the point. Long and sad story short, in Undertale, Azrael died and their siblings' ideals of kill or be killed got ingrained in him. And once he was revived as a flower that no one recognized him as, he tried to help people until he became hopeless and turned to murder instead. Now, how does this apply to Ralsei? Simple. Give a man a mask, and he'll act like the worst version of himself. When given the chance, Azrael chose not to tell his parents who he was, as early as his first reset. He found comfort in his identity not being found, and he used that for good until he got bored. Look over to Ralsei, and you see the opposite happen. The Ralsei's Azrael theory would not only involve Azrael abandoning his good life for one of nothing but boredom and waiting for arbitrary events, but it would also give Azrael a world where no one knows him, and no one recognizes him. I'm not saying he would turn to murder, I'm saying he would be a lot more willing to do bad things if they weren't being immediately associated with his real identity. You know, the identity of the goody two-shoes choir kid. Couple that with the complex a lot of darkness have about serving lightners, and you have a character that sounds a lot more like the knight than Ralsei. Moreover, Ralsei's talk sprites have color, like all darkners, but if you didn't piece that together yourself by now, I really don't know what to tell you. Point being, there is no way Azrael could have reached the Dark World and chosen to stay there, the way people say he would have, in order to put him in the same spot as Ralsei. But the names! They're both princes in their games. They're both boss monsters. Again, refer back to my Toriel and Asgorship post above. However, I do want to dissect the name and prince thing a little more closely. Stories have tropes. No matter how original or unique or groundbreaking or subversive a story is, it will have its own tropes. This is actually common with people's original work, speaking from experience. It's not that the creator runs out of ideas, it's that certain ideas are more easily explored and more interesting to the creator and therefore get reused. Yes, Rossi and Azrael are both princes, but guess what? Lancer and Papyrus both act as literal lancers and sidekicks, not only to the main character, but also to their punk girl best friends, Susie and Undyne respectively, 
while still carrying themselves as the center of what's happening in their most important people in their own lives. Lancer and Papyrus have more in common than Ralse and Azriel do as characters. This doesn't make them the same character. Ralse has more in common with the character of the prince from the Little Prince novel. Why is that? Because a lonely prince in a hopeless world is a trope. But outside of that, why the name similarities? It could be that, just like the names of the games, letters being shuffled around or changed between worlds is there as an aesthetic choice. Just like how Chris is vaguely a mashup of the names Kara and Frisk if you squint at it, how Susie is Susie's name in Undertale, that's kind of weird to say, and even how Asgore calls his shop Flower King even though he has nothing to do with royal affairs in this universe. It's all there as tie-ins between the games, vague word threads that tie them together, not literal explanations of what's happening. If we were to take the route of logic that anagrams equals facts, then we'd have to assume that Toriel is not only the tutorial of Deltarune, which she is not, but that she is also a murderer, as her surname in the game is Dreamer, which is an anagram of murderer, which applies to both of the people that carry that surname in Undertale, aka Asgore and Asriel. So it must be true here too, right? Lastly, the entire basis of this theory is what's called a logical analogy, or at least in my mother tongue that's what it's called, I don't know what the actual academic English name is, which is a thought process that looks at similarities between two subjects and forms the conclusion that they are either one or the same or share other traits besides what's immediately noticeable. A good example would be two tulips. One is white, the other is red. But their flower shape is the same and so is their smell. So, through analogy, we conclude that they must also have the same stem and reproductive process and so on and so forth. This is a fair enough assessment, until you try to conclude that the red tulip is the same as a rose because of their color alone. A very common mistake in analogy, and why it's generally looked down on in scientific research, is because it often leads to actively looking for any similarity while not looking at the disparities. Let's look at Toriel again. As previously mentioned, she has more hair on her head in Deltarun than in Undertale. She is kind and caring, especially to Chris, much like Ralse is. They both enjoy baking and cooking food in general, it seems. They both wear glasses and enjoy reading, and are also people-oriented in their professions. Toriel has color in her sprite and undertale, unlike every other lightner we've met in both games. And she has horns that point inward, just like Ralse does. They both fill the same trope in their respective games as the tutorial character that guides you, and they both resort to fighting when push comes to shove. Oh, and we've never seen them in the same room together. Therefore, Toriel and Ralse are the same character. Not convinced? Is it possible because their ages don't match, their personalities aren't the same, and that they both have very different relationships with the characters around them? Tell me then, do you still believe that Ralse and Azriel are the same, when there's arguably even less in common between them and Toriel and Ralse? TLDR, aka the conclusion, Ralse and Azriel are different characters when examined further than just their surface level traits. The traits they do have in common are often shared with other characters, namely other boss monsters, just like each other, and it's very possible that Ralsei's name, being an anagram of Azriel's, is just an aesthetic choice, just like how Chris equals Kara and Frisk, Susie and Susie, and Undertale and Deltarune, and so on. Shuffling of letters just seems to be a general theme. Ralsei is much more resilient than Azriel is, and he has a much more grounded idea of morality and his duty, and seems unshaken by the threats people throw his way, while Azriel is a canonical crybaby. Azriel is in college during Deltarune, and there's nothing to explain why or how he would be able to fit into a prophecy of Prince from the Dark, when in Deltarune he is neither a Prince nor a Darkner. Toriel and Ralsei have more in common than Azriel and Ralsei, but you don't see people theorizing that, because there's legitimate differences between them that you would have to ignore in order to make it work. Just like how Ralsei and Azriel are different in very key ways, but everyone chooses to look the other way for the sake of a theory that makes Ralsei's blushing around Chris seem weird. Hey, none of those screenshots had me sick character development. You can't just skip the best part of chapter one like that. Oh, um, sorry, Susie, but this video was all about me and Chris's older brother. Man, that guy doesn't even appear in chapter one. It's not fair how popular he is. Y you do know there was a game about him before Deltarune, right? D what? Really? Um, well, yes, it was quite a successful game. It's called, um, Undertale? Nah, doesn't ring a bell. That's quite strange, as you were mentioned in it even when I wasn't. What? When? Uh, Susie, can you not remember this at all? Mm, no, my memory always gets a little bit clammy about these things. Oh, um, funny you mentioned clams. I think it was a clam person that mentioned you? What, like my neighbor? I do believe so. When your name was spoken, it was yellow and people started to believe that you were the human of the yellow soul. I'm no human. Yes, it was quite a strange theory, that one. Uh, much like the one this video is about. Man, how much fourth wall breaking are we even allowed to do? 
Hmm, I think the fourth wall is already in pieces as we speak, so... Oh, cool! Can I smash it some more? Well, if you must.